Hey, Happy New Year! It's Matt here with another game update. I hope you all had a happy holiday. I know I sure did. I was able to spend lots of time with family and actually get a lot of work done on the game, which I'm excited to share with you in our 12th devlog. Um, that's, that's crazy. And it's been a little while since our last one, so I actually have a bunch of things I want to show you. The biggest of which is that we're actually ready to start public playtests. I have everything all set up on Steam. I have the Steam keys all ready to go. I'm going to leave a link down in the description for you to sign up if you want to be a part of that and help make the game a little bit better. I'm going to be honest though, I'm going to prioritize people that are in my Discord just because it'll be easier to communicate. So if you want to increase your chances, I'm also going to put a link for that down in the description. So go sign up with that link, uh, play the game, let me know what you think, and let's get into the video. Let's just do a quick run through from the beginning and see some of the smaller things that I got done over the month. So first I gave our main menu a little bit of love. You can see some dust going floating in the sky, some wind going by and leaves falling from the trees. It makes the scene feel a lot more alive, like we're looking into a real world. If we start a new game, we'll get to player select. And I've done a pass on this based on uh, some feedback from some friends, trying to make this a little bit more clear what you're supposed to do. You can see here, it tells you what interact button you, you need to use if you choose one character or the other with like a different control type. Also, when you join the game up here, you'll see it's explaining to you like how to move, how to move your character around. So like this is how you look that's and, and stuff like that. Also something pretty cool. Let me uh, just get rid of him so I can run around. I also dressed this up a bit more. There's a few more props floating around in there. Now that we're in the training camp, You'll see I added uh, these little arrow indicators. They point you to where you need to go. Those are pretty cool. I'll show you more of that in a little bit. First, I want to show you some work I did to adding and removing players. So players can now join the game and leave the game at any time. So if I'm, I'm on my Xbox controller now, I'm going to push A and it brings in another, another character. And here we'll choose this guy. And here I can like, I added him to the game. You see the, the UI actually updated automatically, which is really cool. So I support up to four players. And if I want to remove him, I can just remove him and he's out of the game. Let's bring him right back. And he comes right back. So super cool. Also, while I'm in that pause menu, I added a whole new little button here for controls and did a pass on this. It's still kind of rough, but you can go here if you need to reference the controls and like know kind of what to do. I tried to not use words so that I don't have to like localize that for different languages in the future. Um, so now I'm following my little indicator arrow. It it goes away once you're on screen. And so you, once you're at your objective, so you can talk to those guys. These weapons here spawn uh, based on how many players are in the game. And you actually have to, it's pretty cool. If you go here, this gate, I put a gate here. It's like hit the dummy. You have to hit the dummy with a weapon before that gate will open and let you pass. So I kind of guarantee that a character has to, has at least a, one weapon before they, they get into the game. I'm just going to kind of skip through some of this stuff you've seen before. I had some feedback from friends that like driving the bicycle uh, was a little bit tricky because it has a different control scheme. So I added this little like race course to, to my tutorial. I use that same pop-up to explain how you control the bike. So you use W and S to go forward and back with the keyboard. And then you use A and D to turn left or right. So it's, it's just like riding a bicycle. A, like uh, W and S are like pedaling or your pedals and A and D are you turning that handlebar. Get that to go away. There we go. And I can just follow this little indicator to the exit. And once I pop here, it automatically takes me out. And if I run back in, it puts me back on the bike. All right. And I use the arrows when you get to level select, I use the, the objective indicators again, tell you where you need to go. Looks like the text is buggy. I got to figure that out. Another thing I added here was a fog of war. This is dynamic, so it reveals itself as you unlock more levels in the map, it pushes back and you can't go into it. I'm, I'm blocked by kind of an invisible uh, collider here. Um, I also added these little pop-ups. I don't know if, if I talked about that in the last one. So it'll tell you what type of level. These are both standard levels, so that's just get to the exit. 
And you can see here, I'm using that indicator again. The little bicycle logo with the arrow is your exit. And then I'll show you on some other objective types, like other mission types. If you have to like rescue some other kids, you'll see a bunch of those little kid pointers around. If you have to find a key, you have to, or like a teddy bear or something, it'll point to you to that too. So I'm trying to help solve the problem where players just kind of get lost in my in my levels. So I'm I'm being a little heavy handed here by pointing you literally at the, the objective, but hopefully it solves that problem at least. So popping up to a bird's eye view for a second, I wanna look at my AI director. I think I mentioned this before, but I dynamically spawn all the enemies in my game. I don't hand place them anymore. I did that in the beginning. And that's based on the situation your team's in, their health, the number of monsters that already are there, the number of players. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, factors that go into determining what state that AI director is in. But one thing I used to do was randomly distribute the creeps around you um, as they would spawn. But what would happen is if you just ran through the level, like here, let me just start it up. If I just ran through the level, I would completely uh, they the creeps would almost always be behind me. Um, I've changed that behavior though now, so they always spawn in front of me now they're more likely to spawn in front of me. So if I'm going here to the left, I should have some creeps start spawning on the left. So they're spawning on the left. If I go up, sorry, this is a little awkward to control on my end. They should spawn over there. If I go down, if I go uh, to the right, they should start spawning to my right. So this is a little wonky to control, but you'll just have to trust me. It does a better job of spawning those monsters um, in front of you, so you actually have to interact with them instead of just instead of just being able to run past the whole level. I solved a really cool bug that has been uh, God it bothered me for so long. So I build these levels with random tiles, right? And you can kind of see the boxes, and and between those, there's a big there are big seams. And I've locked normals. I import them for Maya. Um, I know it's seamless. I, I don't know um, what could be causing it, but I found a really, really simple solution to it that I wanted to share with you guys. And if you look at it now, this is all one mesh. Like I've combined all of those meshes together. And if I zoom in here, um, you'll see between these two tiles where there used to be a seam, now it's just, it's perfectly smooth, exactly how I'd expect it to be, so. Really happy about that. That has been bugging me for such a long time. Here's the script where I actually do that. Um, as my level generator goes through making the level and placing the tiles, it stores an array of each of the ground planes. And then at the end, it kicks it off to this script where it will go through and um, build an array of all the mesh filters, uh, store their world space position, set each of those game objects to false and then combine them into a new mesh and apply a, a single material to it. So the limitation to this is, I believe you're rendering this all even when it's off screen. So I don't think I wanna use this too often, um, but it is, it is lessening the number of game objects that I have in the scene, which is nice. So there might be a few other areas that I would be interested in trying this in, but then also I can only have one material applied to that finished mesh, or at least uh, as far as I know, there might be a way to do it. Um, where you can have more than one, but but as far as I know right now, you can only do one. But yeah, I thought I would share this. Um, it, it, uh, yeah, it, like I said, it's been bothering me for a long time, so I was super psyched to figure that out. So now we're back in my test level, and I'm going to show you some of the weapons and abilities that I worked on. First, here I have this flamethrower. It shoots bubbles and stuff. Um, I bought a VFX pack over the holiday break on the Black Friday sale. So I was able to like level up a bunch of my abilities. I also worked on this new dash ability. So now, uh, instead of just pushing you forward like it used to, now you leave a trail of this like magic smoke behind you and you get a speed boost. And if enemies walk through that trail or any of the, the magic fire stuff, they will take damage over time. Next weapon is this little ice cube gun. So you can shoot it and it shatters on uh, shatters into like snowflakes and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, I also did work to clean up how projectiles handle going up and down terrain. So you can see they sort of hug the terrain. So this will make it a lot easier for you to fight enemies that are, you know, on different, a different level of elevation from you. So you can even shoot down ledges. Oh, that one's weird because it's my test level, but you can even shoot down uh, ledges here. So that behaves a lot more how you'd expect. Also, you can see here too, I have these indicators. I was going to tell you about, I made this little like teddy bear model. So this, 
Depending on the mission type you're in, sometimes you'll have to collect these guys. And this is the icon you'll see when they're off the screen. And this is what an NPC looks like when he's off the screen. Uh, let's go grab another gun. These are little like firecracker rockets. So like they have fuse, they like shoot, like kind of spark for a bit and then they launch. Pretty cool. Oh, we already showed you that one. I got the grenade launcher. So this is cool. This is like a water balloon launcher. So they kind of blow up like water and it does like an AOE damage around them. Uh, the sniper didn't really change. Oh yeah, here, this is a cool one too. Now I shoot, this is another gun that shoots these little RC cars that will like kind of zigzag back and forth. And if they hit an enemy, they blow up and do some damage. Cool little race cars and they, they'll go up and down terrain. This level's weird, so there's some invisible collision there, but yeah, they go up and down terrain. Uh, what else they got here? Ooh, why are these the same icon? Oh yeah, this is the mortars. So you kind of, you, this, this one's good for long range, but kind of sucks at close range. All right, that was at least the highlights of the things that I worked on this month. I, I literally worked on hundreds of other bugs this month. I was a bug crunching machine trying to get this game ready and stable for the play test, which, which by the way, go down to that link and sign up. I can't wait to see you in the game and I'll see you in the next video. All right, bye.